Hey everyone, it's Jamie again here with Lemon Rebellion. Today we're talking with Anne Nickel and we're going to hear her story of how she flipped adversity into advantage in her life. And Anne, thanks for being here. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself and where the story begins. Awesome. Well, thank you first for having me. I appreciate it. And yes, my name's Anne C.K. Nickel and I added the C.K. when I started publishing books. So it's an honor to my parents, both their middle initials. And uh, yeah, I, my story sort of starts about five years ago. I was in an emotionally abusive marriage and finally got the courage to get myself out of that and started life over again. Things were going fantastic. I was doing well with my new business, bought my own cute little historic house, and uh, about a year later, even met someone new. And so things were going great. And then one day out of the blue, uh, well, I got the flu and, you know, normal flu, except, you know, just the horrible symptoms from it. So I went into urgent care one evening and they ran all the tests and everything came back saying, basically, I had the flu. That was it. Well, I got my prescriptions for painkiller and antibiotic. And the very next day when I started taking the antibiotic, within about four hours, I started losing feeling in my legs. And yeah, so about five hours, I had completely lost feeling from the knees down and I couldn't walk. Oh my God. So I was then rushed to, well, my boyfriend took me to urgent care again. They didn't know what to do there. So they stuck me on an ambulance, rushed me to the hospital and they ran a CT scan and that CT scan less than 24 hours after the one the night before suddenly showed my entire body from the kidneys down full of blood clots. And wow, that must have been shocking and terrifying. Oh, very terrifying. And I was sort of out of it at that point because they had given me something. And, you know, so all I really knew was that there was something horrible going on and they were rushing me into surgery. And so, yeah, so I got taken into surgery, was in there for hours and hours. The surgeon cut me open in both groin areas and went in and started pulling out blood clots and yeah, trying to get them out before one of them burst. Because if that happens, you know, a lot of times yeah. people don't make it at that point. Well, during surgery, he also noticed, you know, my right leg had gone back to normal, but my left leg developed what they call compartment syndrome. Okay. Basically, my left leg was so swollen that it was about to burst. Wow. So he had, oh yeah, so he had to perform what they call a double fasciotomy. Basically, he had to cut my leg open on either side of it to relieve the pressure to try to save it. Well, thankfully, I made it through surgery. Wow. And when I woke up, you know, he told me what had happened and said that in all of his years of surgery, he had never seen anything like that and told me I was very lucky to be alive. But then he told me about my leg, what had happened, and told me that, you know, I did this to try to save it, but it didn't work. And so we are preparing to amputate. Wow. How did you feel in that moment? That must have been extremely shocking. Oh, yeah. I think that's basically what it was with shock. I just, I couldn't believe, you know, how I went from, you know, the day before having a horrible flu to now they were telling me I was lucky to be alive and they were going to amputate my leg. Wow. And so, but I had, well, one, I have my faith and two, I had been studying the law of attraction and, you know, I sort of, and for me, I sort of believe the two go together. And so I started praying and I started visualizing and I started picturing myself in the future, being back to normal, all body parts intact. And I, I kept that vision for two straight days. That's what I kept in my head. And I refused to let anything around me, any of the negativity from the doctors, nurses, anything sort of, you know, remove that from me. <clears throat> and so I uh, just kept doing that. And on the third day, when my night nurse came in to check on me that morning, um, suddenly my foot, which had been that awful black and blue and green color that tells you it's dead yeah yeah the color had come back and he found a pulse and so after two days of silence and them saying that my leg and foot were dead 
suddenly my leg and foot had come back to life. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So basically, wow. and they had, they had no explanation for it. They didn't know what had happened. And, you know, I'm laying there thinking to myself, wow, I, I was already, my life was already saved and I just got a miracle. I mean, to me, that's what it was. I had yeah. just manifested a miracle. And so I was, you know, sitting there sort of celebrating and everybody else, I had this room full of doctors and nurses and, you know, all these people standing around my bed in total shock, trying to figure out what had happened. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. So I basically, like I said, I felt like I got a miracle. Sounds like and you so did. From, I'm sorry. Sounds yeah. like you did. Yeah. I did. And so from there, um, and of course this surgeon, great surgeon, he saved my life, but you know, like a lot of doctors, very straightforward, you know, to the facts. And so he said, well, you get to keep your leg, but and I was like, okay, what's the butt? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like after everything that's been through, they're going to give me a butt. Okay. Yeah. You're going to give me a butt. And he said, well, you know, you still don't have feeling. And because of the nerve damage, we don't know if or when you will get your feeling back. So it's going to be very hard for you to learn how to walk again. And you could be a gimp the rest of your life. So that's what I heard. And then he pointed out the wounds again. And these wounds were huge. I mean, these were the type of wounds. And I know this is going to sound gross, but when they removed the bandages and they, they were moving my foot to try to see, you know, and kind of test yeah. it. And while they were doing that, I could see inside my wound and see my muscles and ligaments moving. Wow. That's yeah. That they were feel pain. pain. You couldn't feel it, but I couldn't feel it. So really I, I sort of feel like I got another blessing for a while because I still didn't have feeling. Yeah. I couldn't feel pain. that. Oh yeah. It would have been horrible pain, Wow. but, but just being able to see inside your own wounds that was, thank you're goodness I'm not a more, you're a crazy yeah, was, lady, huh? <laughs> Oh yeah. If I was a queasier person, that would have been even worse. Uh, but anyway, he, yeah. yeah, but he told me that these wounds were so bad and that the outside wound had actually torn after he cut it. And because of that, he said, these wounds won't heal on their own, at least one of them. So you're going to have to have a skin graft surgery to heal them. So, you know, now I'm, you know, I'm being told that I could be a gimp the rest of my life. I'm going to have to go through more surgery, which would have meant more yeah. recovery, more scars. And but it was at that point, the first time in three days, it was at that point that I cried. I don't know. I don't think it might have just been I was coming out of the shock from it. Sure. Um, because for two days, like I said I went through everything. I stayed positive, didn't cry. Wow. And I'm a crier. I'm one of those people that cries at the happy movies and the sad movies. I mean, everything. Yeah. And I hadn't cried. There was no emotion. And so I really think a lot of it was shock those first couple yeah. of days. Sure. And, but once the floodgates released, I cried for almost 24 hours. I couldn't stop. Yeah. And, you know, so then I had this very straightforward surgeon sort of trying to pat me on the back. And say, I'm so sorry. It'll be okay. Um, but so from there, it was a matter of, okay, I'm going to have a long recovery ahead of me. Now, how am I going to handle this? You know, I was able to stay positive through the first, you know, two days yeah. and I've received this miracle. Now I have to get through the rest of it. And so anyway, after that, it was then a, well, it's been two and a half years and I, I'm about 98, 99% back to normal. Wow. wow. So, yeah, I ended up, um, I got my feeling back down to my ankle at about the two month mark. And at that point I started physical therapy yeah. and I told them, you know, this is what the surgeon told me. I still don't have feeling in my foot, but I want to walk again. I will walk again. You tell me what to do. I'll do it. Yeah. And I had these great physical therapists who worked with me and they told me it's going to be painful and it's going to be difficult, but if you do what we tell you, you know, you can do it. Yeah. And I went from using a walker to a cane and walking on my own in the hospital within six weeks. That sounds like a really fast recovery given everything. Yeah, it was very fast. I still, yeah, I still had to use the cane for a little while um, on my own, basically being outside, going up and down stairs, being on uneven ground. I used the cane for about another month. But yeah, basically the main part of the 
the recovery was that six weeks. I did everything they told me to do. I tried to stay positive and yeah, learned how to walk again about six weeks. And then the wounds took longer. Um, and I went to wound care, you know, first it was about three or four times a week. Then they narrowed it down to twice a week. I was learning how to change my own bandages, you know, several times a day, trying to keep these wounds. Okay. And they both ended up healing on their own That's without cool. surgery, but it took about seven months for both of them to heal. Oh. So it was a long process. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, um, that in those first couple days when you got all that bad news and the reality of oh gosh this isn't the flu this is something much more serious you you held on to a vision of yourself using the leg again moving forward and, and that kept you kind of in a positive headspace what kept you moving through you, know, you had the moment of okay ah, this is a lot i've cried i've recognized what's happened but when you had that longer period of recovery, the six weeks at first, and then the seven months with the wound healing, what, where were you at, you know, internally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually to, to move through that space? Well, first it was, I stayed very positive. I think because of, you know, I felt very blessed to be alive. I felt blessed to still have my leg. And so at the, in the beginning, it was, you know, very positive and, uh -huh. You know, I kept pushing myself forward. It was difficult though, because I have never felt that, that weakness ever in my life. You know, I've been through a few things. I'd watch my parents go through stuff. I had no clue what a person goes through, but their body goes through when you go through something like that. Yeah. And so there was a lot of weakness, um, you know, just getting up from either the bed or the chair where I was just to try to go to the restroom only maybe five, 10 feet away, I would be so out of breath. I would almost pass out. Wow. So yeah, yeah it just, it takes everything out of your system and I couldn't eat for the longest time. It changed my sense of smell. It changed my sense of taste. Wild. Strangest things. Yeah. Oh, wild. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Very weird. So I would smell foods that normally I used, I used to love and they would make me sick. And, you know, then I would get my, get past the smell and then the taste would make me sick. So, you know, the first couple of months it was, you know, living on shakes, the only thing I could get down without yeah. getting sick. So there was a lot of strangeness and weakness and just this other type of recovering that had nothing to do with the leg. Yeah. And so I had that. And then once the feeling started coming back, and the nerves were trying to fire and work again, that's when the pain hit. Okay. And that pain is the worst pain I've ever dealt with in my life. And it was strange and hard to cope with because I had these horrible shooting pains that would go down from my leg, through my foot, and through my toes. So I was having the worst pain of my life in a part of my body I still couldn't feel. And so it didn't make sense to me. Like, how can this be so horrible when I can't even feel it? And the pain got so bad that I would cry myself to sleep some nights wow. because you know, I'd be fine for a minute and then a pain would hit and just shoot down through my toes and basically make me almost jump from my chair. And it was just, it was horrible. Sounds and awesome. so that part got rough and it was difficult. And really it was a lot of, you know, prayer, a lot of visualizing and sort of having to remind myself because I talked to the doctors about the pain and they told me that pain means that your nerves are firing. They're trying to come back, which is a good sure. thing. That means, yeah. you know, you, you may get your feeling back. So if you just tell yourself that and keep remembering that, that it's a good thing. And so you're laying there in pain day after day, but yeah. you're trying to tell yourself, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. You know, my, my feelings going to come back. And so that's sort of what got me through was just constantly reminding myself that yeah. this is a good thing. And, but like I said, it went on for months. And once I hit the year point, you know, the pain had pretty much subsided by that point. Um, they did find one pill that worked. Um, it's a pill that's used for uh, people who go through seizures and different things that um, affect your nerves um, because normal pain pills did nothing for it.
but when they found this nerve pill and finally let me try that for about eight months, that finally helped with a lot of the pain and that helped me get through a little bit too. So with that, and like I said, the constant reminding myself that, you know, this means I'm healing. And then of course, every time I went to wound care and each week I saw the wounds getting a little bit smaller yeah. and this other surgeon finally looking at them and telling me you weren't going to need surgery. I mean, you, you're growing new skin where they said it wouldn't happen. So another miracle. Yeah. Another yes, miracle. Yeah, yeah. Once again, another miracle. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I had those little reminders every week too, that, you know, my body's healing, you know, the, the good thoughts, the good vibes, the prayer, everything is working together and my body is healing. So if I can just keep going, I'm going to make it through. That's awesome. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's what really helped was just, like I said, that constant reminder and the constant, you know, mindset and trying to stay positive. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you were very, you know, in the midst of all that physical pain and then the, the adjustment of adapting to life that was a little bit well, quite different, <laughs> what yeah. you're going through quite different. It sounds like you were um, just so open to looking for almost any evidence possible that would confirm that this vision of I'm going to be okay, I'm going to get better, impossible things have already happened in my favor. And it's almost like you kept finding little pieces of evidence that confirmed I'm on the right path, just hang in there, just hang in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I did. And then about, I think it was, that happened in August. And one of the things that the, one of the worst things that hit me almost even more than the pain was that I had had this dream since I was a kid of becoming a published author. You know, that was my big dream. And, you know, we all have these dreams. And of course, sometimes then life happens and, you know, you go yeah. through the marriage and the kids and you've got the job and your dreams keep getting, you know, put aside. And so here I was laying there in probably the worst shape of my life you know, going through this recovery. And then one day I, I had a worse breakdown from, than it, from anything from the pain or the incident when it hit me that I almost died without ever realizing that dream. And that was one of the worst little breakdowns I had the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so from that day, I told myself, okay, you know, basically, yes, I was still working. Thankfully, I had my job, my own business, and I worked from home. Wonderful. So after about the first month when I started feeling better and kind of had my head right, I was able to still work my business, you know, laying in a bed, sitting in a recliner. Sure. So that, you know, kind of kept me going too. And I had that to do and I had my recovery, but I told myself, okay, you are going to now make time to focus on your dream because you almost didn't get to make it. And so that was in August. And in January, I finished and published my very first book. Of this year? Oh, I, this was 2018 that it happened. Okay. So, 20, so 2019, okay. just, you know, a few months after the incident, I published yeah. my very first book. Oh and goodness. then two months after that, I finished and published my very first poetry book. Wow. And yeah, and so I had those things too. Because once I did that, it just, I don't know, it brought this other, you know, just sort of happiness thinking I finally did it. And I knew they weren't going to be some, you know, big bestsellers. They weren't going to hit the charts. Hey, but you wrote the book. <laughs> exactly. You know, I finished two books, I published them and, you know, I did self-publish. And when you learn that process too, oh my gosh, the first time or two, you know, people don't get it's, you know, it's not the matter of just, you don't just slap a book together and stick it online. Yeah, I've not done it, but it, I'm sure it's not as easy. As it is. No, there's a lot to it. Um, but I learned it, you know, I finally yeah. got myself through the process. I learned it and I did it. And I could finally say, no matter, I knew no matter what else happened to me in life, I knew I could say I'm a published author. You know, that was the big dream of my life. And I could finally say I did it. And you know, so once I hit that point, that was another little sort of happiness and a reminder yeah. every day that even going through the worst thing I've been through in my life, I was able to do something that became the best thing in my life. Wow. Yeah. And so I had that every day too. And when I would talk to people about my story, what I was going through, 
And I was able to say that, you know, you'd see that look and, you know, when people, wow, you did that. And, you know, you'd see it sort of affect other people and make them realize, wow, okay, if she could do that, then why can't I do something like that? And so that was something too, that's helped in these last two and a half years. Well, that's amazing. There are so many inspiring elements to your story. You know, your, your attitude, your mindset, your openness, and then this, um, this kind of like, you might knock me down. You might almost take my leg, but I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to get back mm-hmm. up, write a book, um, and share my story. I think that's, that's absolutely really, really inspiring. And the energy with which you tell the story is also super super encouraging and super exciting um i'm so glad that you're well (laughs) i'm so glad that you've taken what happened to you and you know um used it to build you know from the the maybe difficulty of that situation to build out something even better and like you said do your other from what did you how did you say oh you were so articulate now i'm just blubbering along (laughs) i'll edit that out later No, you said that from the hardest thing in your life, you're able to then create uh, something that felt like one of the best parts of your life. And I think that that's yep. incredible. Well, for anyone that's listened that, that felt like they resonated with your story, if you were to leave them with one last like nugget of wisdom, what would you leave them with? Oh, mainly don't ever, ever give up. You know, that if you can, you know, push through, have persistence, and have faith, I mean, I, you can do anything, but the point is to never give up because I think a lot of people give up right before that miracle happens. You know, if I had given up that day in the hospital, when they told me they were going to amputate my leg, who knows what might've happened, but even then I didn't give up. Yeah. And, you know, with every single hard day that came, like you you know, you said, i tried to find one little thing through each of those, you know, those horrible days. And so by doing that, you know, I got through, you know, a bad day because I had, you know, I was able to focus on one good little thing. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you know, like I said, a few months later, I was able to publish. And then I was then able to take what I had been through. And now I'm trying to focus on helping other women do the same thing. So yeah. I got not only passion from it, but I got a purpose from what I went through too. Wow. But I only was able to do that by never giving up, by not letting the pain overtake me, the doubt overtake you know, me. I, I just, I kept going and I kept pushing no matter how hard it was. And, you know, now I'm able to look back on it and, you know, see every little step of the way and every little thing that happened. And it's amazing because if I think back on those days, I think, wow, you know, I remember sitting there this day and thinking, how am I ever going to get through this? But I, but I did. And so that's the main thing is just never, ever give up, Mm -hmm. you know, don't let anyone or anything take away what could be, you know, and as long as you're on this earth and you're here, you can do anything. And so just never, ever give up. I love it. That's, that's an awesome way to end this interview. Um, And thank you so much. And CK (laughs) Nicole, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your story. I I really appreciate you. And uh, for anyone that listened, uh, leave, leave a comment about how this story inspired you. All right. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye.